وقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله استخلص هذا الدين لنفسه ولا يصلح لهذا الدين إلا السخاء وحسن الخلق ألا فزينوا دينكم بهما أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Respected ulama kiram elders, beloved brothers in Islam, the Mubarak and blessed Sayyidu Shuhur, leader of the months of the Islamic calendar, the month of Ramadan, recently passed us by. Unfortunately, if one has to look around at the situation with our masajids, at the fervor which we are exhibiting towards the amal of deen to a very large extent illa mashallah many of us have reverted back to the tartib and attitude that we had prior to ramadan this unfortunately indicates a very great shortcoming that exists in many of us that to a large extent we have become seasonal Muslims we have become habitual worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our ibadat, our fervor is dictated by maybe some big night or maybe some special occasion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws open the doors of His clemency and mercy on certain occasions, heightened periods. This is not so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only worshipped during those periods. But this should become a springboard, a stepping stone for us to realize that like how it seems almost in the blink of an eyelid, We saw the Hilal of Ramadan and then before we knew it, we looked for the Hilal of Eid. Exactly like that, the life in this world is just a passing phase. As Muslims, as people of Iman, our attitude has to be such that we have to constantly be in the preparation of moth and death. If we take this month of Ramadan, one of the main objectives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah says, fasting was prescribed upon you as it was upon the nations before you. What is the goal? What is the goal that we were given Ramadan? Just to fast in Ramadan, just to read Quran in Ramadan, just to come to the masjid in Ramadan, just to have a fervor towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's obedience, abstention from guna in Ramadan? No. Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ We gave you this month so that you become muttaqi, so that you develop taqwa, so that you develop a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now is the time for us to take stock. Have we developed taqwa? Ramadan has come and gone. Have we developed taqwa? Has our life changed? Have we gone closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who are the muttaqeen? Who are the people of taqwa? Taqwa is not something you can find on scale and go and weigh it in this dunya. Taqwa is not something that you can physically see. It's an ephemeral concept. So how do we gauge? How successful was our Ramadan? Did we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did we develop taqwa? If you look in the Quran, interspersed throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us what we may call a measuring tape, a yardstick, a thermometer. Measure in the light of sifat and attributes. Are you muttaqi? Are you the friend of Allah? Have you developed taqwa? 
Have you gone closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? One such example, occasion of Jumu'ah, unfortunately is very limited. So one, we are just going to focus on one aspect. An aspect which in the current situation and plight that not only the ummah but humanity finds itself in, is extremely important. Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an, Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Allah appeals to the competitive spirit that inherently Allah has created in every human being. Human beings are competitive by nature. From a young age, if you observe two brothers of similar age or two sisters of similar age in one household, already we will see how they will try to compete with one another. If that one has a toy, this one wants a similar toy. If that one has something, the next one wants the same thing. This is naturally an inherent part of the psyche of human beings. We compete. As we grow bigger, then the spectrum of our competitive spirit becomes broader. If we are, finally we enter into business, we worried about what our neighbor is doing. What somebody else who is importing the same commodity is doing. What somebody else who is in the same line of business entrepreneurship is doing. Competition, competition, competition. This is human nature. Hassan Basri rahimahullah says, إِذَا رَأَيْتَ الرَّجُلُ يُنَافِسْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَنَافِسُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ This great sage of Islam puts it beautifully. He says, if you see someone, if you see someone competing with you in dunya, don't fall into that trap that you want to compete with him. In dunya, no. Nafisu fil akhira. You compete with him in akhirat. You compete with him in outdoing him in amal. You compete with him in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And exactly to that Allah appeals in this verse of the Quran. Where Allah says, Sari'u. Compete with one another, no problem. Outdo one another. Do better than the next person. But... إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Compete with one another to gain Allah's forgiveness. Compete with one another to gain Jannat. أَرْضُ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ The breadth of which is equal to the distance between the heavens and the earth. This is just for our understanding. Jannat is even bigger than that. And then Allah says, Uiddat lil muttaqeen. We have prepared this jannat for the people of taqwa. Now who are the people of taqwa? Like I said, you can't measure it. There's no scale. There's no thermometer. There's no list every morning. The malaika come down with these are the muttaqeen. Sifat, attributes. What are the qualities of the muttaqeen? And then take the thermometer. Ramadan came and went. Three weeks have gone. Am I amongst the muttaqeen? Is this quality which Quran is by using as an identification trait, this quality, if it is in a person, he is now he has now entered the ranks of the muttaqeen, or is in that direction? What is the first quality Allah mentions? Alladina yunfiquna fi sarra'i wa dharra. Who are the people of taqwa? Put it in layman's terms, Allah says, a muttaqi is a generous person. A muttaqi is one who identifies with the plight of the poor. A muttaqi is one who feels sympathetic when he sees his fellow human being suffering. A muttaqi is a man with deep pockets. A muttaqi is not one who will hoard the wealth of this world, who will cling on to this dunya, Khalid bin Ma'dan, rahimahullah, beautifully puts it, he says, خَيْرُ مَا لِلْرَجُلْ أَلَّذِي إِنْتَفَعَ وَابْتَذَلَ بِهِ He said the best wealth a man can own is that wealth which he derived benefit from, which he spent upon others, he earned his akhirat. And then he says, شَرُّ مَا لِلْرَجُلْ What is the worst type of wealth? What is the worst type of wealth? أَلَّذِي لَا تَرَاهُ وَلَا يَرَاهُ he said, that wealth which you hoarded and hoarded and hoarded, put away in your khazana. Got up every morning, looked at your computer screen. MashaAllah, today my wealth has increased and increased and increased. But, but you hoarded it. You never spent it. The plight of the poor, they cry. The demands on that wealth, sometimes your own family members, you kept them. 
living a life of austerity, you held on to the well. And what is the, what is the end result? What is the end result? He says, this is the worst type of wealth. What type of wealth? You never saw it, you never benefited it, you never, you, you never spent it, you hoarded it. In akhirat, in akhirat, حِسَابُهُ عَلَيْكْ وَنَفْعُهُ لِغَيْرِكْ حِسَابُهُ عَلَيْكْ وَنَفْعُهُ لِغَيْرِكْ Beautifully he puts it. He says, tomorrow in Allah's court, you have to give the hisab for this wealth. How did you earn it? Was it halal? Did you break Allah's command? You have to give the hisab. But because of your miserliness and your bakili, the benefit someone else will get. Because you left it behind, you never spent it. What you hoarded, hisab you're going to give. But you never spent it, you never benefited. Uiddat lil muttaqin. Coming back to that verse of the Quran. Allah says, We prepared this jannat for the muttaqin. Who are the muttaqin? Alladina yunfiquna fi sarrai wa dharra. They are those who spend, spend, spend in the way of Allah. They are those who benefit the poor. They are generous people. Everyone that comes into contact with them, benefits from them in ease and in adversity. To be generous, you don't have to be wealthy. Quran says, whether you are wealthy, whether you are poor, generosity is a kafiyat of the heart. It is a condition of the heart. And generosity is so important, so important. This is the quality of the muttaqeen. Ramadan was given. Ramadan was given. It is mentioned. Our great, our beloved, our beloved, benevolent master, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the month of Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan, he would increase his generosity. Why? That was the training ground. Sahaba say, Ajwad min al mursala. In Ramadan, he would become even more generous than a blowing wind. How important is generosity? The verse of the Quran, which I mentioned in the beginning. Allah says, this word in Arabic, Lan. Lan. Never. Impossible. Forget about it. This is layman's translation. Forget about it. Impossible. Lan tanalul bir. You will never attain true taqwa. You will never attain true piety. You will never attain the true ta'alluq and relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will never become the friend of Allah. Lan tanalul bir. You want to become Allah's friend? You want to get taqwa? You want ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Quran is giving you a precondition. What is that condition? Hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibboon. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Allah says, you want to find me, you want taqwa, you want to become my friend, in faq, spend. Spend. Become a generous person. Why? To find Allah for Allah's love to enter this heart, you have to give up things besides Allah that you love. And the fact of the matter the fact of the matter, my respected brothers, illa mashallah, there's nothing more beloved to us than our mal. There's nothing more beloved. Human beings are such. We have such a passion, such an attachment, such a link with the material wealth of this world. Allah Ta'ala acknowledges this in the Quran. How many places Allah Ta'ala? First, when Allah, one is compulsory spending, compulsory spending zakat. Ten times, aqimu salah. When Allah commands us with salah, salah is the salah is the bedrock of deen. Salah is the head in the body. Without salah, there is no deen. But with salah, what does Allah tell us? Aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Allah combines the injunction of salah with zakat. How many times? Not one time. Ten times, ten times in the Quran. One time, aqimna salah wa atina zakah. Nine times, aqimu salah wa atu zakah. That is compulsory spending. And then infaq, infaq in Arabic means spend. Yunfiqun. Man dalladi yuqridu Allah qardan hasana, fa yudaifahu lahu adhaafan kathira. Yunfiqun amwalahum. How many places? 
Ulama say we have counted more than 80 places, 82 plus minus places in the Quran. Allahu Akbar, more than 80 times Allah is commanding you, spend. Spend, infaq. Jahidu bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Spend your life and your wealth. And what is interesting? Like I said, Quran acknowledges. Quran acknowledges this great love and attachment we have with wealth. That is why when Allah talks of spending your life and your wealth, Quran, look at the tartib. Allah says, Bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Spend your mal and your life. Life is more valuable than mal. Without life, what good is the mal? Yet why does Quran say, Spend your wealth first, then life? Allah is making ishara. Quran is telling us that human beings are such that their love for mal is more than their own life. A man will sell his iman for mal. A man will sell his izzat for mal. He'll sell his ghayrat for mal. He'll sell his dignity for mal. He'll commit murder for mal. Human beings, such is the passionate attachment with wealth. They'll give up everything for wealth. They'll sell their souls for wealth. Quran acknowledges this. That is why Allah tells us, Bi amwalikum wa anfusikum. Bi am, you want to find Allah? Give up that which you love for Allah's sake. Spend. And what is ajib? Spend, are you going to lose it? Are you going to lose it? No. Allah says, I give you a guarantee. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ Whatever you spend, we are going to give it back to you. Hazrat Zainul Abidin, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the great grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when a beggar used to come, when a beggar used to come, look at the reaction. Marhaba, marhaba, marhaba. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I declare my sugar to you. I declare my gratitude to you. You have sent a porter to transport my goods to my actual home for me. Look at the analogy. Today when we see the beggar, we're running. We look at him with a, with, a, with a sour, with a sour gaze. Look down upon him. The people of Allah, the friends of Allah, look at this reaction. Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, you shukr. You sent a porter. You sent a porter to me to convey my goods to my actual home, Jannat. Why? Because Allah says, when you spend in the way of Allah, فَيُضَعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَافًا kathira. This is Quran, this is Haq, don't doubt this. Allah says, whatever you spend, we are going to multiply it for you many, many, many times. مَا نَقَّسَ مَالُ عَبْدٍ مِّن صَدَقَ The master Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu the seven heavens and the seven earths can come to an end. Not one word of lie passed the lips of my Mubarak Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said the wealth of no man diminished through sadaqa. It is not getting less, you are not losing. Don't fall into the trap of shaitan, don't be deceived. How much longer are you going to amass the wealth of this world? Become sakhi. Become sakhi, become a generous person, become a generous person, become a generous person. Why? Because the more you spend in the way of Allah, the more you will find Allah. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ One sahabi comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, Ya Rasul, the crux, the mafum of the riwayat. Ya Rasulullah, mere dil mein shok nahi hai. There isn't a desire in my heart to die, to meet Allah. I fear death. I fear death. What is death? Al mawtu jisrun yusilul habib al habib. Death is a bridge. Death is a bridge that connects the lover with his beloved. Death is the stepping stone to meet Allah. But he says, Ya Rasulullah, the fear is there. The fear is there. What does Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Do you have wealth? He says, Yes. Spend it in the way of Allah. The heart will follow the wealth. The heart will follow the wealth when you will spend in the way of Allah. You will send it to Akhirat. The love for Akhirat will enter the heart. Today the love for dunya is there. Why? Because we are clinging on to the dunya. Allah's ulama say, ulama say, kaan kol kar sun lena. Kaan kol kar sun lena. They say Allah's 
friendship will never truly be established with a bakhil, with a miserly person. And Allah's friendship will never break from a generous person. Bishar Hafi rahimahullah puts it like this. He says, Shatirun bakhil, Shatirun bakhi, he says, Shatirun sakhi, Sa Shatirun sakhi, Ahabba ilallahi ta'ala min sufiyin bakhil. Oh, beautifully he puts it. Bishar Hafi rahimahullah, actual name in the books of Tariq, Bishar bin Harith rahimahullah. He used to say, a cunning, sly, generous person. A cunning, sly, generous person is more beloved in the eyes of Allah than a Sufi who day and night is in Allah's ibadat, but he is bakil, he is a miserly person. Rasulullah sallallahu said, Ayyudayin, adwa min al-bukhl. He said, there is no sickness, there is no malady, worse and more detrimental than miserliness. He said, خَسْلَتَان لَا يَجْتَمِعَان فِي مُؤْمِن خَسْلَتَان لَا يَجْتَمِعَان فِي مُؤْمِن He said, two qualities, two qualities will never come together in a mu'min. Iman and these two qualities is like trying to mix oil with water, it won't happen. It will never happen. What, what are the two qualities my Nabi said? سُوءُ khuluk, Bad akhlaq, bad morals, bad character. And specifically, even though it is part of bad character, he specifically mentions, he says, Al-Bukhal, miserliness. Miserliness and bad character will never come together in a mu'min. Allahu Akbar, my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Bakheel, Ba'idun min Allah, Ba'idun min al-Jannah, Ba'idun min al-Nas. He said, if you become a miserly person, if you become a miserly person, you will be far away from Allah, far away from Jannat, and far away from the people also. Allah will take your love out of the hearts of people. They will look down upon you. You can have all the wealth of the world. But if this quality of generosity is not there, Allahu Akbar. Jareer bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala says, Kunna inda Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I mentioned, this developing this quality amongst ourselves, particularly in the current situation, a lot of people ask, Muslims suffering in Palestine, Muslims suffering in China, Muslims suffering in Syria, right on our doorstep, poverty, Muslim, non-Muslim, people are suffering in every direction. What is my responsibility? What am I supposed to be doing? Many, very often I mention, even our servants in our own houses, we pay them a pittance of a wage. What is our attitude towards our staff? What is our attitude towards those human beings we come into contact with? Constantly we are being tested. Put Allah in front. Put Allah, Allahu Akbar. Ulama say that even a kafir who is generous, Allah gives him rope. One amusing anecdote they mention, Khusru Parwez. This was that Iranian king who tore the letter, the epistle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He died on kufr. But historians mention specifically, he had a lengthy kingdom and he had a lot of wealth. The reason they mention specifically because of the generosity of this man. As a Yunus Puna sahab, rahmatullahi one of our kabirin, when he came to South Africa, very often in his bayan he used to mention one amusing incident about this Khusru Parwez. That one day one fisherman caught one fish. So he decides to take a gift for the king. He brings, the, brings this fish, ordinary fish, presents it to the king, Khusru Parwez. This man becomes so happy that he orders his courtiers to pay this fisherman 4,000 dinar, 4,000 coins of gold. His wife gets upset because at the end of the day we know who the government actually belongs to. Can be a big king also. Like one person went into a shop. He says, you know what, I'm looking for a novel. They ask, what's, in, what's the title? Husband, master of the house. They said, listen, fiction and cartoons is upstairs. This is not this section. So Shireen, his wife's name was. She got upset. You're giving an ordinary fisherman 4,000 dinar. What are your courtiers, your generals, etc. going to expect? You'll be left with nothing. Take it back from him. He says, in front of everybody I gave, how am I going to take it back? She says, okay, I'll show you one plan. Call him. Ask him if the fish that he gave you is male or female. If he says he's male, tell him you wanted female. If he says he's female, tell him you wanted male. So he says, okay, I can do that. Sends for the fisherman. This wasn't an ordinary fisherman. Fishermen generally are cunning, mashallah. 
So he worked out there's a problem. 4,000 dinars was at stake. So Khusru Parvez asked him, that fish you gave me, was it male or female? He says, Badsha Salamat, you are my king. How can I give you an ordinary fish? This fish was transgender. Mixed between the two. So he got so excited, he gave him another 4,000 dinar. And this man couldn't even carry it. One coin fell down, one gold. He picked that one up also. Now the queen is furious. What's wrong with you? Akal ka mara hua. You gave him another 4,000. But look at, look at what a bakhili is. Look at what a kanjus. No culture tolerates bakhili, kanjusi, miserliness. Kafir hokar. She says, look at what a bakhili he is. Even that one coin, he didn't leave it. Call him back and tell him to give everything back because he's a bakhil. So he summons him. Even that one coin, I gave you enough for the next five generations. You couldn't leave that one coin also. Give it back to me. He says, Badshah Salam, it's not a question of miserliness. Your name, your picture was on that coin. Imagine if somebody has to step on it. They're showing disrespect to you. He became so excited, he gave him another 4,000 dinar. Then his treasurers told him, listen, if you're, long, you're going to carry on listening to your wife, there's nothing going to be left in the treasury. Just let it go now. Kafir hokar. Kafir hokar. Mu'arrikhin, historians write that Allah extended the kingdom of this man because of his generosity. Allah, Allahu Akbar. The master of generosity, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How beautifully my Nabi put it. Allahu ajwadul ajwad. Allahu ajwadul ajwad. He said, there is no one more generous than my Allah. There is no one more generous than my Allah. Wa ana ajwadul di Adam. After Allah, you want to find, you want the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want the ta'aluk of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want the nur of sunnah. You want to bring your life on the tartib of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kaan kol kar sun lena. With, with miserliness, with miserliness, with miserliness, it is impossible. Sunnat. Read seerah. My Nabi didn't know the meaning of the word la, no. Jareer bin Abdullah says, Kunna inda Rasulullah, we were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people came, Khufatun, Oratun, Mujtabin Nimar, Awil Aba. Their poverty could easily be discerned. They were barefooted, they hardly had any clothes on. They had one one sheet tied to their body. Hagar, lean. What was the effect? When he saw Muslims suffering, when he saw his ummah suffering, Jari radiallahu anhu says, Fatama'ara Rasul, Fwaju Rasulillah. Lima ra'abihim min al faqa. He says, The color of the face of my Nabi changed. He was so hurt to see people suffering like this. Bilal kola da azan. The ummah of Medina gathers. My Nabi leads the salah, then he climbs onto the mimbar. Time is uh, running out of time. He delivers the khutbah. And then he says, The ummah is suffering. Spend, O oh my ummah. If you have one dinar, spend. If you have one dirham, spend. If you have surplus food, spend. Whatever you have, bring it. Sahaba were not like you and I. From left, right and center, their homes were empty. Quran would come down describing the homes. On one occasion, one person comes to Rasulullah s.a.w. Inni majhood. Ya Rasulullah, I'm hungry. I am suffering. My Nabi immediately sends a message to one wife. The, the message comes back. By the qasam of that Allah who sent you with the truth. Ya Rasulullah, in your home, in the home of Nubuwad, there is nothing illa ma except water. Next wife, Ya Rasulullah, only water. Third wife, Ya Rasulullah, only water. Nine homes in Medina, nothing but water, there was no food. Then my Nabi says, oh my sahaba, who will host this person? Your brother is hungry. One rewind, it comes in an Ansari. So one rewind, the name comes Abu Talha. Says, Ya Rasulullah, I will host him. He takes this person home, rushes to his wife, is there any food? What is the response? Unannounced guests. Today unannounced guests, our, our women folk, Illa mashallah, get upset. What's wrong with you? But nami hoga. What face we gonna show? Preparation has to be made. This attitude is not the culture of Islam. Islam, there's no protocol. Akalla takallufan. Sahaba didn't have protocol. Unannounced guests was baraka, was blessing. What does the, the what does the um, what does his wife say? Umm Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha. She says, Oh Abu Talha. 
We only have enough food for the children. We only have enough food for the children. He says, placate them, pull them, put them to sleep. Then, when the guest sits down to eat, pretend as if you are sorting the lantern out. Put the lantern out. Let the guest of Muhammad Wasallam eat. You and I and our children will go hungry. This was the mizaj of generosity. They were prepared to give everything up in the way of Allah. These are not fairy tales and stories. This was a daily reality of Medina Munawara. The, she carries out the plan of her husband. Next morning, when he goes to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Jibreel has already come. Jibreel has already come with the, And what does my Nabi say? Allah was pleased. Allah was pleased with what you did with the guests last night. Quran comes down. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam amongst your companions, they are those who will give preference to humanity over themselves even though they are hungry. Khutbah is given, left, right and center. Within a short space of time, Sahaba bring whatever they have. What is the reaction? What is the reaction? What is the reaction? Jareed bin Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala says, فَرَأَيْتُ وَجْهَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَتَهَلَّلْ كَأَنَّهُ مُذْهَبَ He says, I looked at the face of my Nabi. My Nabi's face was shining with happiness. He says it was almost as if his face had turned to gold. Almost as if gold was emblazoned. So happy my Nabi came. When? When the ummah dug deep in their pockets at the plight of the poor. Anas radiallahu on this I will terminate. Khan kol kar sulnana. Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Khadimu Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa The servant of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ten years in the khidmat of my Nabi. He says, awwalu khutbatin. Khatabah al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, in amongst the first khutbahs that my Nabi gave in Medina. إن الله يا أيها الناس إن الله قد اختار لكم الإسلام دينا إن الله قد اختار لكم الإسلام دينا فأحسنوا صحبة الإسلام بالسخاي وحسن الخلق that oh my ummah Oh my ummah, Allah has chosen Islam as your religion. Islam is not a name. Islam is not a title. Muslim is not having 786 in your cell phone number. No. Muslim is a quality. Islam is a quality. Islam is a way of life. In this hadith, my Nabi says, beautify your contact with Islam by emblazoning yourself with two qualities. When a, when a non-Muslim sees you, if they want to know you are a Muslim, what is your identity? These two qualities, he said, husnul khuluk, good akhlaq and character. And then part of akhlaq, particularly my Nabi mentioned, as-sakha, become a generous person. A Muslim is a generous person. A Muslim is a generous person. A Muslim is not a miser. A miser is far from Allah, far from Jannah, far from humanity. He can never be an ambassador of Islam. My Nabi says, beautify your contact with Islam through generosity and good akhlaq. And then my Nabi goes on. He says, inna sakha'a shajaratum min al-jannah aqsanuha fi dunya faman kana minkum sakhiyan la yazalu muta'alliqan bi ghusnim minha hatta yuridahu Allahu al-jannah he says, generosity, generosity, generosity is a tree in Jannat. Its branches are in this world. Your contact with Jannat is generosity. Your contact with Jannat is to become a person who spends upon others. Your contact with Jannat is to feel the plight of the poor. Your contact with Jannat is to dig deep in your pockets. Your contact with Jannat is to become the true ambassador of Islam. He says, as long as you are generous, Allah will connect you with this branch of Jannat till eventually your generosity will take you to Jannat. And then my Nabi said, Allah protect us, Allah forgive us because our natures lean, have a proclivity towards miserliness. He said, Allah, inna loom, shajaratum min nar. He said, miserliness is a tree in Jahannam. Miserliness is a tree in Jahannam. Aghsanuha fit dunya. The branches of the tree are in this dunya. Faman kana minkum la'iman. Whoever amongst you is a miserly person who will hoard, who will cling on to this dunya, who will not spend in the way of Allah. He says, you have attached yourself with this branch of miserliness which is linked to Jahannam. لا يزال متعلقا بغصن منها حتى 
يُورِدَهُ اللَّهُ بِهِ فِي النَّارِ Oh, كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ He says, you have attached yourself with this branch and as long as you persist in your miserliness, this quality of yours will take you into Jahannam. Allah protect us. And then my Nabi, مَرَّتَيْن قَالَهَا مَرَّتَيْن Anas رضي الله عنه says, he says, أَسَّخَاءُ فِي اللَّهُ أَسَّخَاءُ فِي اللَّهُ أَسَّخَاءُ فِي اللَّهُ Two times my Nabi said, he said, for Allah's sake become generous. For Allah's sake become generous. You want taqwa, you want Allah's ta'alluq, you want to become the friend of Allah, you want to connect yourself with Allah, dig deep into your pockets and know and understand that whatever you spend in the way of Allah, Allah will give it back to you. Allah give us tawfiq wa khudar.